Adenocarcinoma lung. Lung adenocarcinoma is the oddball lung cancer. It is more common in women than in men and is not strongly associated with smoking. It also arises more commonly in the periphery of the lung, typically presents as a peripheral mass as opposed to central locations seen in squamous and small cell lung carcinomas. They grow more slowly than squamous cell carcinomas, but metastasize earlier. Adenocarcinoma prognosis is poorer than squamous cell carcinoma. It is most common lung cancer associated with thrombophlebitis. Adenocarcinoma is characterized by metastasis to contralateral lung, lung-to-lung -lung metastasis. Epidemiology. Most common primary cancer which accounts for 35 to 40 percent overall, surpassing the squamous cell and small cell forms. Two hypotheses to explain why the incidence of lung adenocarcinoma is on the rise are cigarette smoking has increased in women and the use of cigarette filter tips causes smokers to inhale more deeply and expose the peripheral lung regions to carcinogens. Note. This doesn't explain why adenocarcinomas occur more commonly in non-smokers. It is the most common cancer in non-smokers. It has the weakest smoking relationship. It is more common in women than in men. Grow slowly and form smaller masses than do the other subtypes, but metastasize early. Etiology. Aside from the classic P53, RB and P16 mutations seen in almost all types of lung carcinomas, two genes of interest are commonly mutated in lung adenocarcinoma. KRAS, seen more commonly in the smoker patient subpopulation, and EGFR, seen more in the women and non-smoker patient subpopulation. Morphology Adenocarcinoma of the lung is a malignant epithelial neoplasm with histologic glandular differentiation and or mucin production. Mucin production is frequent but not always consistent. Adenocarcinomas are usually peripherally located but also may occur closer to the hilum. Histological types. Adenocarcinoma of lung, pre-invasive lesions. There's atypical adenomatous hyperplasia and adenocarcinoma in situ. Minimally invasive lesions. Minimally invasive adenocarcinoma, mucinous or non-mucinous or mixed. Invasive adenocarcinomas, lepidic predominant adenocarcinoma, acinar predominant, papillary predominant, micropapillary predominant, solid predominant with mucin production. Variants of invasive adenocarcinoma. Invasive mucinous adenocarcinoma, colloid, fetal, enteric. Adenocarcinomas may assume a variety of growth patterns including acinar or gland forming, papillary, mucinous which is most often multifocal and may manifest as pneumonia-like consolidation, and solid types. This variant requires demonstration of intracellular mucin by special stains to establish its adenocarcinomatous differentiation. Pre-invasive lesions of adenocarcinoma. The term bronchoalveolar carcinoma and mixed subtype adenocarcinoma are eliminated. The term lipidic has been introduced to describe non-invasive growth along intact alveolar septate. Lesions that were formerly classified as BAC are now placed in one of several categories that appear to correlate with the early stages of transformation. Atypical adenomatous hyperplasia progresses in a stepwise fashion to adenocarcinoma in situ, minimally invasive adenocarcinoma, which is less than 3 cm in diameter with an invasive component of less than 5 mm, and invasive adenocarcinoma, which is a tumor of any size with an area of invasion more than 5 millimeters.
well demarcated focus of epithelial proliferation with a diameter of 5 mm or less, composed of cuboidal to low columnar cells that demonstrate nuclear hyperchromasia, pleomorphism, and prominent nucleoli. It is a monoclonal and shares many molecular aberrations with adenocarcinomas, example KRAS mutations. Adenocarcinoma in situ, formerly known as bronchoalveolar carcinoma. It accounts for 5% of primary lung cancers. It is a direct precursor to the development of malignant metastatic adenocarcinoma of the lung. They are by definition non-invasive and non-metastatic. Stromal, vascular or pleural invasion is characteristically absent. No relationship to smoking. Derives from clara cells, non-ciliated epithelium which is the most common, mucin secreting bronchiolar cells or type 2 pneumocytes. Often involves terminal bronchoalveolar regions in the peripheral parts of the lungs as a single nodule. Diameter of the nodule is 3 cm or less. Growth is along pre-existing structures and preservation of alveolar architecture. The tumor cells, which may be non-mucinous, mucinous or mixed, grow in a monolayer along the alveolar septa, which serve as a scaffold. By definition, adenocarcinoma in situ does not demonstrate destruction of alveolar architecture or stromal invasion with desmoplasia features that would merit the diagnosis of invasive adenocarcinoma. Radiologically mimics lobar pneumonia. Minimally invasive, micro-invasive adenocarcinoma. Tumor size is less than or equal to 3 cm. It has a small invasive component which is less than or equal to 5 mm, associated with scarring. They will show peripheral lepidic growth pattern which is tumor cells are growing along normal appearing alveolar septae. Most but not all of these lesions are non-mucinous. There is a good prognosis. Invasive adenocarcinomas. They are classified by their predominant pattern into lipidic predominant, acinar predominant, papillary predominant, micropapillary predominant, solid predominant with mucin production. The percentage of lipidic components should be mentioned along with a listing of the other patterns observed and their percentages. Invasive mucinous adenocarcinoma, formerly known as mucinous bronchoalveolar carcinoma. It spreads aerogeneously and forms satellite tumors. These may present with lobar pneumonia-like consolidation. Note. Lung adenocarcinoma markers are thyroid transcription factor 1 and napsin A.